Okay folks, big day. This is my shop, CNA Motorsports. This is the Durango and it's going inside and we are gonna start putting the axles in this thing. Let's do it, come on. I think we're gonna park the Durango right there, and then she goes on this lift, goes up in the air, axles get cut out from underneath it, and we are starting this thing. It might be another few days before I get down here, but it's in the shop. It's the first big step. I'm going to throw the keys in it so the guys can move it around. And we are officially in the shop. Here's the Durango on the lift. All right, folks, I made my first delivery to the shop here. We've got my big ass rear axle, the KMCs, the Mickey Thompson, uh, Baja Pro XS's. Lovely chain, truss, ready to go. There's the victim on the lift, ready to go. And uh, trusty old flatbed that I just fixed up did perfect for the job. So now it's time to get prepared for tomorrow because tomorrow we start the party. Hey folks, today's the day. We're gonna start tearing that thing down. I always pride myself when I'm doing stuff for you guys, when I'm doing like uh, how-tos or doing work. I always pride myself that I'm in my garage doing it, you know? So I don't wanna put off a bad vibe that I'm here in the shop. I'm here in the shop because I have to do a lot of testing and tweaking on these brackets. I do feel bad that this isn't in my garage, but this is definitely this shop is definitely the place to do this. So I'm gonna get started. I'm gonna set up my camera stuff and I'm just gonna start hacking the rear axle out. Here we go. I got so excited I never even said, I'm Daniel, this is aired down and today we're gonna get down. All right, the cameras are officially rolling. The camera A, the camera B, no more iPhone video. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna lift this up into the air a little bit more to where it's a comfortable working height, put some jacks under it to stabilize it, and then start um, actually doing the nuts and bolts here. So, up it goes. So rather than just hack this thing to bits, what I'm going to do is remove the e-brake cables because maybe I can patch them in or use them somehow on the new axle, but I don't want to ruin anything that I could potentially use. So I'm going to take the time to take the e-brake cables out. Whenever you're messing with all these springs, eye protection. Unless you want to get popped in the face.
complicated mess all these drum brakes are. Okay, there's the e-brake salvage for in case we need them later. What about sway bar? Oh, we have to move the shocks to get to the sway bar. There goes the sway bar. Okay, next what I'm gonna do is just take out some of like the wires and the brackets and the little knickknacks that are holding the axle up for like the VSS and all that other stuff. And like the vent hose and whatnot. Okay, the only thing left in my way here is the leaf spring bolts. We can get those out easy. If you don't have a rattle gun and a universal, man, it just makes this so much better. Okay, what I'm gonna do now is just lower this a little bit, throw the tires back on with a couple lug nuts, and then that way I can drop this rear axle on the ground instead of trying to finagle it up in the air and then I can roll it around on the tires. Let's see if we can hammer these bolts out. All right, so under here I took out the, shack the lower shackle bolt instead of the upper shackle bolt, and the lower did not want to come out, so I took the upper out and it slid right out. So now we're gonna take the upper out of this side. Ooh -wee. I'm really glad I've got this thing for this job. Now let's move on to the fronts. Just the rear. Well, let's try and like hell to get the ring and pinion done down in the front. Should we move that cheap out of the way? Nah, I know you want to work on it. Oh, it's back in the day here. So it's out of your way. I'm, I'm in your way. So. All right, you can see looking behind me, drive lines out, rear axles out. Time for the bumper. And there's like a thousand bolts holding this damn thing on. Welcome to the underbelly of the Durango. Everything's out, there's one, except for one thing. I gotta cut this exhaust out eventually to put my upper link in. So the next thing we're gonna do is just sawzall this piece of crap out of here. 
And when we put it back together, it'll have a Flowmaster or something real nice. I should start it up just to hear it now, but actually that's obnoxious. Now I'm just going to clean out some of the shielding that's going to get in the way. I think that's the only shielding I want to remove. There's no point in taking it out if it's not going to interfere with anything. So now a couple other little things like uh, the bump stops and just little knickknacks I'm going to start pulling off. taken out about everything we can. Now let's see if we can't start thinking about mocking up the rear axle in here. finally. This has been a long time in the making. Let's take you to the other side so you can see right height. Camera's overheating. Old junk. Got this Mustang here but you get an idea of what I'm really looking for here. Oh man, that looks so good. Okay, right now we're shooting over this beautiful old Mustang, but you can see in order for me to get this to the fender, I'm gonna have to cut out this orange line. This will eventually be covered up by a bumper anyway, so I'm not too worried about hacking into it. And then I'm not into any of the cosmetic stuff of the body yet. So it's time to get the angle grinder and get to moving. said that that Jeep is cooler than my Jeep. <laughs> well, we're getting closer. I'm gonna eat some lunch, the fam's here. And then we're gonna get back on it. Say hi guys. Hey guys. You're on hi. candid camera. <laughs> guy. Look at that. That's the full bump. It's just putting a little pressure on this. I've got about that high before I hit the body. So I might just clear this a little bit so I can raise up in there. The lower the better, honestly. 
And then uh, way back here, it's all clearance, so we're looking good. So here, here's just a quick walk around. The camera's got a lot of zoom, but... This is the old leaf spring mount in the front. It has got to go next. And it's right next to the fuel tank, so pray for me. this sway bar sleeve off of both sides. The time has come to use the plasma table, one of the coolest tools that we get to use. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is just knock a little dross off of this thing. And I've got these glasses for that plasma so I don't get my eyes burned. So we're just gonna take a scraper and scrape. If there's little extra bits, it just won't come off. And then if you want that extra classy touch, that's where this comes in. Just like that, you got some world-class, high-quality plasma cut brackets. Donna, 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 <laughs> Donna, Donna. Surprise attack. You call me Grammon. So, who are you? I am Scott, Kander Off Road. You got a website? I do. What's it? Kanderoffroad.com. How do you spell Kandor? C-A-N-D-O-R. Just like it sounds. That's right. Do an Instagram? I do. What is it? Candor Off-Road. There you go, easy enough. <laughs> so we share the shop with Candor. He's kind enough to loan us a lot of this equipment and uh, in exchange for rent. And uh, look what he's up to. So uh, there's a lot of cool guys in the shop building cool stuff. Yes, there is. So there's no shortage of cool companies in this one location that you could uh, come to. It's a good arrangement. All right, we're in the dark corner of the shop over here now, but we've got this really nice swag bender, and it's time to bend these up. And because there's not a great way to align these things, I've put these these holes in here, or these cuts in here, and also the cut helps not bend this diamond out of shape. But I can line these cuts up with the dies on that and get a really straight cut, despite having any, no, not, despite not having any features, really, to locate with.
bent up and ready to rock and roll. All right, I'm just gonna knock the rest of these parts out. together. We got a nice sacrificial bushing in there thanks to Candor. Now it's time to start Zeusing it up. That link that I was just working on welding goes right here, that link mount. So I'm gonna have to get up in here and buzz all of this down. That'll make life a little easier. There's a good reason right there to have quality tools and a nice air supply. Okay, my mount has cooled down enough finally to where I'm thinking about tack welding it up onto that frame. We're gonna get our first look at how it fits. And it looks like it fits pretty good. It's designed to basically almost bottom out up against this weld on the body mount here. So to get about there, it looks like I need to cut back a little bit more of the paint back here. I already sprayed this with Pam. Um, it's a good anti-spatter, but also it kind of like is a nice rust preventative for the metal too. Yeah, that's probably gonna slap out and hit me right in the face when I least expect it. So I can just, whoa. I can just barely get up here with a clamp. All right, it is right up against that weld, but not on it. I can tell because I can see it sitting flush inside this hole. So I'm gonna clamp it a little bit. Then I'm just gonna hammer this that direction. Let's get another clamp up in there. See if we can. I think we can just barely get another clamp up there. Yeah, there we go. Now it's sitting flush. So what I'm gonna just do is tack weld it in a couple spots just to hold it on. And then we're gonna leave it tacked until it's all mocked up and finalized. When it's all mocked up and finalized, we'll drop the axle, drop the links, and then we'll just Zeus all of this stuff together. should be all we need. Two tacks on the bottom, two tacks on the side. That should be tight enough to do whatever we need to do with the links and with the mock-up. So now we'll just pop the clamps. Now we'll move on to the other side and do the same thing. I've already welded the second one of these and I've already buzzed down the frame over there. I don't know if you can tell. And I'm probably just going to bolt this up to the frame too before I show you, or weld it up to the frame. Okay, I wanted you guys to bear witness to the install, or at least the mock-up install, of one of these beautiful wide open designs, 38 inch links. Oh man, that is so cool. These links are humongous and they're gonna look really good on this rig. 
And what's cool, I've got this little Zerk skid. You can probably see here. I've got this tiny Zerk skid and it hits the nut before it hits the Zerk. So that's cool. Not like my back end would ever dro droop out this far anyway, but I'm kind of seeing that we're most likely going to have a fit with uh, all this stuff when I'm trying to mock up the links with the axle because it hits when it's at straight on and straight on is 10 degrees and that's kind of what I had spec for it. If it'll fit with a few degrees in the inside, it'll work, but otherwise I might have to find a new clever spot to put this and I don't think there are any. One really important detail Super important detail about these links and these really nice aluminum threads in here is you want to make sure that you use liberal amounts of anti-seize on them. Which is why we have this giant tub of copper anti-seize. And I didn't I couldn't figure out if copper or aluminum anti-seize was the best choice for these, but in lieu of a response from the internet, we went with copper. So Hopefully copper is right. I'm sure any anti-seize is way better than none. But because of the steel on aluminum, and aluminum's pretty gummy, it'll actually gall up really bad. So you want to take your time to, even during mock-up, even before you really even put these together for the first time, even just to play around with in the garage, you should anti-seize them. It's just the right thing to do. And like, I'm gonna put a boogery nasty amount in here. I mean, why not? In this case, I think more is more and not, you know, the common less is more. I think this is one of those cases where more is more. I didn't take the time to really clean this work area up before I filmed. But you're not here to see how clean my counters are. You're here to see a Durango get built, so. <laughs> if Wide Open Designs watches this, they'll be proud. That's just the most beautiful thing, next to seeing those axles up here, of course. This one's gonna have an even harder time clearing this. I'm not really sure what to do about that, but we'll cross that bridge when we get there. How about that? All right, we added again. This time we're cutting the upper stuff. You can see where we cut the lower stuff, and then Grant came over and cut some of that stuff. Uh, Grant's my buddy with that white K10. He's also the co-owner of CNA. He's doing the, his K10 all linked up in the back. It's gonna be, or all linked up in the front. It's gonna be super sick on 14 inch King 2.5s. Wee! All right, let's get this thing running. Well, as you can see here, I am now band sawing some two by two. This is part of the uppers. I'm gonna have a big triangulated truss style thing on the frame. And that way I can have my upper more centered by the drive shaft rather than on my frame. And that's going to control my axle movement better. All right, so what I've done, cause I don't have any real documents for this, like I have DXF files for the plasma cutter. I just saved the drawings on my phone, just pictures of the drawings like a 24.2 degree angle is what we're shooting for. Okay, so I'm gonna cut right here. That cuts just a sliver off the tube. Okay, so what we do is we start it and then we just crack this open a little bit and then it just cuts down that uh, real nicely. All right. 
right, I'm gonna cut the other pieces. Okay, here's the main structure of the upper. We've got the frame would be here. This is at an angle relative to the frame to be straight with the rear axle. And then I've got this truss structure here. So this is the general shape it's gonna take. And then we have gussets and stuff like that to strengthen up the edges. I've got another gusset that goes here. It looks like a stake. Hmm, stake. Okay. So you can kind of see how this is gonna go together. And then this is gonna go here where that slit is. And then this poor piece that I beat the tarnation out of is gonna go on the on like right about here and slip over this. And then the point of these surfaces is to weld to it. So that's what's going on. And then we've got some various stuff like this is a fish plate for back here, which will also get a bend because there's another bend here. So there's bends all over the frame we're trying to accommodate. And then I've got this little cap that's gonna fit in here when it's all said and done. And then lastly, a little gusset that goes there. So this should be pretty burly. All right, folks, I'm gonna leave you off here. I'm doing this as a multi-episode, multi-parts per episode kind of experience. I don't really want you to miss out on any of the cool little finer details, and I kind of want to take you on this whole journey with me. So bear with me as I produce these episodes and, and make this content. It's going to take me a while. I'm not even all the way done with the rear axle at this point, and I've got like 400 gigabytes of 1080p on a hard drive. So rest assured, I'll keep working. Um, this is it for right now. Um, I don't really want to be the guy that says like, subscribe, and follow, but please subscribe if you want to see some more of this stuff. And as a quick little update for my subscribers, I did just monetize this channel. Whoa! Which is exciting because I'm finally starting to get paid a little bit for all this work I'm doing. So don't hate the ads. Sorry for the ads. I know that you don't like them. But they help me out a ton. They kind of make this whole thing worth it. And, uh... I know I didn't crack any beers open. I didn't really want to drink at the shop with all that, you know, heavy duty equipment. So here's a maker's mark and Coke. Mm. Anyway, guys, thanks for coming along with me. I hope to have some new people come along with me too. make some new friends here at Aired Down. I'm Daniel. This is Aired Down. This is my new truck, by the way. That's a different episode. Peace out. Go rock crawling. Bye bye.